Today we'll talk about the worst mistakes a lot of XP lane players make. If you'd like me to upload the worst mistakes of players on the other lanes, make sure to hit like, share and if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. This is so common in lower ranks and is still a problem even in higher ranks. Just to be clear, I am not saying you shouldn't join team fights. Just make sure you are not forgetting to manage the lanes effectively. Always check the minimap and make sure that your minions have at least reached half of the map. And once you are done with the team fight, go back to your lane. The worst thing some players do is they join a clash on the other side of the map, or to be specific, from the bottom lane to the top lane and vice versa. If your teammates are clashing on the far ends of the map, instead of joining them, take advantage of that diversion in order to destroy one or more of the enemy team's turrets. Let's use this map as an example. There are minions close to your turret, but instead of clearing or at least giving your waves an advantage in numbers, you joined a team fight in the middle lane. While it definitely is a good idea to help your teammates out, make sure to either clear or at least kill two of the minions in order to give your own minion waves an advantage and prevent the enemy minions from dealing damage to your turret. The same applies if, for instance, you are defending other lanes. Before joining clashes on the other lanes away from the lane you are on, make sure that your minion waves have an advantage first. The only times you should or will prioritize a teamfight is if it is close by or not out of the way. Of course, that's something you have to judge on your own or determine using common sense. Or to give you an idea, what I mean by close by are clashes that you can reach within 5 seconds from your turret. Otherwise, if enemy minions are close to your turret and your minions are outnumbered and you can't reach the clash in 5 seconds, might as well clear the minions instead. While it's true that everyone can gain gold regardless whether they last hit minions or not, last hitting minions will give you more gold. Remember that Mobile Legends is a momentum game, which means the earlier you get a hold of your momentum, the better. And one of the best ways of getting momentum early is by efficiently farming. The total amount of gold you would gain from last hitting is considerably higher. It's never acceptable to take jungle crypts from your side of the map. Not only is it inefficient, it also takes away crypts that your jungler should have taken. By taking the jungle crypts on your side of the map, you are making it more difficult for your allied jungler to progress. In other words, you are helping the enemies win against your very own jungler. The only time it's acceptable for you to take jungle crypts is when you are invading the enemy team. At the end of the day, your place to get your resources still is on the lanes. Too many times I see an XP laner die because they are greedy. They either go for the kill but end up dying themselves, or worse, the enemy survives and the greedy player ends up dying alone. As an XP laner, it's important that you survive as much as possible since you are tasked primarily to manage the lane. Don't prioritize kills. If the enemy was able to escape, don't feel bad. Just get back to farming on the lane and push or defend. The fact that you force the enemy to retreat is good enough to rack up the gap between you and the enemy XP laner. Knowing when to freeze the lane is very important because it helps you properly zone out the enemies and force them to get delayed in both experience and gold progress. There are times when it's best clearing quickly such as when major objectives such as the turtle are about to appear or when your team is orchestrating a nearby clash. Besides that though, you should always freeze the lane since this is the most effective way of not allowing the opposing XP laner to gain experience and gold. It will help your team have a matchup advantage because of how low and how few the items are of one of the enemies. This is also why having map awareness is important. The moment you see the turtle only has a few seconds before spawning, let's say 10 seconds or less, then you better clear your lane quickly and get into position to secure the turtle. Otherwise, I suggest making sure the enemy XP laner is gapped by freezing and zoning him or her out. For more details about lane freezing and zoning, I suggest watching this video. I leave the link in the comment section below. 
While it's true that using the minimap is vital for any role to succeed, this is especially important for XP laners. XP laners are expected to manage their lanes alone. That's right. I know a lot of you are always demanding help from your teammates. That's perfectly fine, especially if the turtle is about to appear or is already there, but most times, your teammates are not obligated to help you at all. This is why an effective XP laner is usually expected to have excellent survivability and some tankiness. You must utilize your minimap effectively in order to analyze and predict enemy movements. Some things you should watch out for are how many and which enemies are missing, how much of a threat are they against your hero, and how long have they been missing from the minimap. Knowing which enemies are missing will give you a better idea how to react, whether you'll play defensively and be extra careful, or play aggressively and orchestrate a counterattack with your teammates. Knowing how long they are missing can also help you figure out or predict whether they are camping or are missing because they are traveling to another lane in order to orchestrate a gank. XP laners can either be built with defensive gear, damage gear, or a little bit of both. The trick to knowing how your hero should be built is their attack type or playstyle. Heroes that should be built with mostly or purely defensive build are obviously primary tanks. You'll know the hero is a primary tank based on what primary role they have first. In this example, Kufra is a primary tank and secondary support while Hilda is a primary fighter and a secondary tank. Most primary tanks are meant to be built with defensive gear since their skill damage scaling is very underwhelming, meaning if you get them damage equipment, it will barely benefit them. There are, however, very few examples that can be very powerful with damage equipment such as Grok because of how high his first skill's physical damage percentage is. As for the XP laners that are ideally built with most if not pure damage gear, those are heroes that heavily rely on their basic attacks, especially those with enhanced basic attack effects such as Zilong and Argus. Giving them defensive equipment is not always a good idea because it renders them less effective with their true roles and winning conditions. Also, their skills themselves rely on having either very fast attack speed or high base physical attack in order to become effective. Such heroes are usually very squishy but are very powerful in clearing waves and destroying turrets. What they rely on for survivability are their skills such as their ultimates which either render them with maximum movement speed and immunity to slow effects or of course immunity to death itself. And finally the generic or typical XP laner. These are heroes that are ideally equipped with a mix of both damage and defensive gear. Depending on your playstyle and hero pick, these heroes normally have 1 to 3 damage equipment only while the rest of the slots are reserved for defensive equipment. Never ever build them with too many damage equipment. One way to find out if your hero should be built that way is their skill set. Does your hero have very low skill cooldown? Does your hero rely on skills to deal damage? Does your hero require some time to ramp up their damage or combo? If two or all of those questions were answered with yes, then you should build with a combination of damage and defensive gear. Some examples are Hilda, Yuzhong, and Balmain. There you go, those are some common mistakes I frequently see from players on the XP lane, some of which I myself committed in the past. Did I miss anything? Leave your thoughts on the comment section below and if you haven't yet, don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Stay safe everyone. Peace.